So, so the tra traditional model from a cash flow point of view is that you have to spend all of your money to develop the game. Uh, and so you're in negative cash flow, obviously, because you're spending money and not generating money. Uh, you spend all your money, then you launch the game, and then you hope that you're going to make some money in return. You, know, you put the box on the shelf, and you have the sort of traditional sales cycle, et cetera. Um, and it's very risky, right? They have a lot, you have a lot of gatekeepers that are sort of controlling who gets on the shelf, who gets funding, which projects get greenlit, because it's a very risky proposition because you have to spend your entire sort of pile of cash before you have any sense of what kind of real revenue you're going to generate. And that's endemic to a hit-driven industry is that you really don't know what's going to be a hit or what's not going to succeed in the marketplace. Uh, whereas uh, some of the new emerging online business models uh, enable you to go to market online uh, at beta. So you spend a little bit of money developing enough of the game to release in quote unquote beta form. So if it's a racing game, maybe it's a couple of cars, a couple of tracks, uh, you know, et cetera, and you release enough of it to attract an audience. Uh, and since you're online, let's say you would use one of the alternate business models like free to play. So the game would be free, uh, and then you would make your revenue via well, either ads and or um, microtransactions. So if I wanted to buy more cars or paint jobs for my existing car or mags or whatever, another track, uh, you know, I'd pay a dollar here, a dollar there, mi microtransactions. Uh, and so as a developer, you're able to spend a bit of money, release in beta, then start generating revenue and building traction for the game, and then sp further spending development budget that matches the actual revenue that you're generating. You can kind of play with that in real time and monitor the revenue that's coming in, and then you can spend more or less production dollars to kind of continue the effort. Uh, if the game goes completely flat because nobody cares about your racing game or you're just not able to build an audience, well, then you stop spending development dollars and you move on to another project or you reallocate resources to an, uh, you know, one of the other projects you have going on. Uh, if things you know, start going through the roof and you're building an audience, well, then you put in more development dollars so you can add more tracks, more cars, et cetera, so that the you know, audience you have you know, continues to pay and continues to sort of upgrade and buy additional items and sort of attract a larger audience. So, so it allows you to sort of play with the, uh, your investment more so in real time as you're monitoring, monitoring the revenue uh, that's coming in. So I mean, obviously, there's still risks involved there, but it's dramatically sort of reducing risks uh, to a large extent.